Okay, so I'm taking on your jam syllables and this is topic one today. Separation of mixtures and purification of chemical substances. We are going to take the two items here, A and B. Pure and impure substances and boiling and melting point because they are related so we need to talk about them in one day. So the objective here is to distinguish between the pure and impure substances and the second objective relating to this topic is that use boiling and melting point as a criteria for purity of chemical substances. Okay, now let's go right straight into the video. Pure substances are substances that have fixed composition and fixed properties. We have two types of pure substances, elements and a compound. An element is a pure substance that cannot be decomposed into any simpler pure substance like your hydrogen, your helium, carbon, oxygen and so on. And a compound is a pure substance that is formed by a fixed combination between different elements. Okay? Knowing what pure substances are, let's go into the impure substances. Impure substance is a pure substance but mixed with an impurity. That is, it is a mixture between a pure substance and impurity. Remember the word mixture. So now you see water now. If I add something else to the water, you will say that water is no longer pure because it has been stained, it's no longer pure. But note, if the, the substance you are adding is going into a chemical reaction with the, pure, with the other pure substance, it forms another pure substance. Like you said ammonia, ammonia reacts with hydrogen to form ammonium ion. This ammonium ion is not an impure substance, it is also a pure substance because it's another compound. So note, it is when the new substance does not go into chemical reaction with the other pure substance that it forms an impure substance. So an impure substance is a mixture between a pure substance and impurity. They must not react chemically because once they react chemically, they form another pure substance. Okay, so knowing that, let's go into the objectives. Distinguish between pure and impure substance. So I have to distinguish is that pure substances have a definite composition and impure substances do not have definite composition. And they also have definite properties and impure substances now have definite properties. Like if we say the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, that is no matter quantity of that water, as long as that water is pure, it will only boil at 100 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric. So that means if that water is no longer pure, it will not boil at that exact temperature. So impurities generally lower the melting point but raise up the boiling point. So they increase the boiling point and reduce the melting point. Now the next objective here is that use boiling point and melting point as a criteria for the purity of chemical substances. Like we have said earlier now that impurities lower the melting point and increase the boiling point. So the water that I gave as an example, if water is no longer pure, that boiling point will be increased. So instead of boiling normally at 100 degrees Celsius, so let's say boil at 112, maybe 130 and so on. So now let me give, let me quickly go into questions, jam questions that they ask on this particular topic on this section A and B. So the question one is from Jam 2013. The presence of an impurity in a substance will cause the melting point to A be zero, B reduce, C increase, and D be stable. You will see that the answer is reduced because the impurity lower the melting point. So the answer is that it reduces the melting point. Now let's check another question still on this boiling and melting point and also the impurities. The normal boiling point of a liquid is defined as A. The temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure and B. The temperature at which bubbles begin to form and C. The temperature at which 
the vapor pressure equals one temperature and the final one d the temperature at which the rate of condensation equals the vaporization of the liquid the correct answer here is a the temperature at which is vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure so boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of that substance equals the atmospheric pressure while melting point is the state the temperature at which the heat energy is able to break the solid into a liquid that is melting has to do with a solid turning into a liquid so the temperature at which that solid is being broken down the bonds of that solid is broken down into a liquid that is what we call a melt the melting point while the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure it's not necessarily when bubbles start okay so now let's check another question question three okay this past question was from jam 1978 now question three here is that so three is from jam 1985 the boiling point of water ethanol and toluene the boiling point of water ethanol toluene and protein to all are 373.0 kelvin 351.3 kelvin 383.6 kelvin and 372.5 kelvin respectively so which liquid has the highest vapor pressure at 323.0 Kelvin? A. Water, B. Toluene, E. Ethanol, D. Butanol, Butane 2 Oil, and E. Non. The question is that which has the highest vapor pressure at the 323.0 Kelvin? Remember, I said that the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure that means we are going to check for the one that the boiling the vapor pressure is nearly the atmospheric pressure so which of these is closest to the 323 the correct answer is the one having the 351.3 kelvin because as 323.0 kelvin it is almost the atmospheric pressure because it's close to the boiling point of that one so if that substance will be the one with the highest vapor pressure so that substance is the second substance which is ethanol so ethanol is the correct answer here let's go to the next question question four from jam 2002 a little quantity of trichloromethane which has the boiling point 60 degrees celsius was added to a large quantity of ethanol at which has the boiling point 78 degrees celsius so the most probable boiling point of the resulting mixture is what is from a 69 degrees celsius to 70 degrees celsius b 70 degrees celsius to 74 degrees celsius c 82 degrees celsius to 84 degrees celsius and d 60 degrees celsius to 78 degrees celsius okay so now remember i said that impurities raise the boiling point so the methane now is add the trichloromethane is added to the ethanol so the trichloromethane is the impurity but little quantity of the trichloromethane is added to the ethanol i remember they said it's a mixture they are not going into a reaction so this now is an impure substance so now remember it increases the boiling point so the range that is above that 78 degrees celsius the original boiling point of ethanol will be the correct one if you check the options the c is the one that is above the 78 degrees celsius mark that is that increase the boiling point so it is from 82 degrees celsius to 84 degrees celsius so the correct answer is c let's go to another question now the last question we are taking for today is question 5 from jan 2007 which of the following alkanes has the highest boiling point? Okay, generally in alkanes, the more complex they are, the more they tend to become solid. So they are, the more complex they are, the higher the boiling point. So you can see that the first one is pentane. Remember, pentane has five carbon atoms. Ethane has two carbon atoms. 
methane has three carbon atoms while methane has just one carbon atom so you you can see that the one with the highest boiling point will be methane see that's the more complex one we have come to the end of the video i'll see we tackling the other part of this topic later on this week so don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you not miss any of my further videos and if you have any question be based on the topics or based on the lesson you can drop in the comment section and i will get to you bye for now